Good morning, everybody, and welcome to The Balancing Act. We're so glad you're here. I'm Julie Moran. And I'm Olga Villaverde. All right, did you know that gut health is now closely linked to brain health? No. I, I didn't know, know that. that. It's true, and now there are better tests to identify your potential risk for Alzheimer's and other neuro disorders. And more than 6 million U.S. kids have food allergies. That's a lot. That's a lot. So the holidays can be especially challenging with all the yummy treats and such, and we've got good information on how to make them festive and safe. Get this, also a cool app geared just for those who suffer from food allergies. There we go. Isn't that great? I love this, so let's get going. The Balancing Act starts right now. If you've had to watch a friend or a loved one go through the stages of Alzheimer's, you know it's devastating effects on both the patient and those who love them. Thankfully, there's some good news when it comes to Alzheimer's prevention, and Dr. Chad Larson, who specializes in autoimmune and environmental disease testing and prevention, is back to tell us all about it. Welcome back. Thanks for having me. No, thanks for being here. You know, really important topic, Alzheimer's disease. Have experts really uh, found out what is the precursor to it? What the current data is telling us is that these neuroinflammatory conditions like Alzheimer's disease really have their root in inflammation. And when I say inflammation, what I think a lot of people would have in mind is if you sprain your ankle and your ankle swells up and it, and it looks like it's, we say, oh, you've got an inflamed ankle. That's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about swelling here of the brain. What we're talking about is an imbalance of biochemicals in the brain. And what happens in a neuroinflammatory conditions like Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. Parkinson's disease, other conditions like that, there's an imbalance of biochemistry, and these inflammatory chemicals get kind of out of control. And the, the brain is such a vital organ that this inflammatory immune system is much more reactive in the brain than the rest of the body. The rest of the body works more like a, a sharpshooter. In the brain, it works more like a shotgun or hmm. a machine gun, and it just it tries to go after whatever the trigger might be. It goes after that trigger in almost an overactive way. If that happens enough times, the neuroinflammation is going to happen, and that could eventually lead to a, a neurodegenerative condition like Alzheimer's. And so what are these triggers? Yeah, there's lots of potential triggers that could fire up the immune system of the brain, but there's a couple key ones that I think are really overlooked, and they're actually quite common. Um, one is gluten. Gluten from wheat is well documented to affect a certain part of the immune system causing inflammation, and that inflammation can go to the brain and start to deteriorate the brain. It can cause a damage to the brain in such a way where the brain's not working properly, inflammation happens, and then a condition could really start to manifest from that. Another one is called LPS, or lipopolysaccharides. This is from the gut. The gastrointestinal tract has a bunch of bacteria in it, good bacteria, bad bacteria, but LPS comes from bad bacteria. And if this is allowed to really proliferate in the gut, it could start to chew away at one of the key barrier systems that separates the gastrointestinal tract from the rest of the body. And if this barrier system becomes compromised, LPS is allowed to get into the circulation where it's not supposed to be. And there's very good recent literature that shows when LPS is in the circulation, it can go to the brain and cause inflammation and lead to, to neurodegenerative damage. Now, the last time you were here, you shared with us some groundbreaking tests for gluten and wheat reactivity. Is that test also something that could help us to prevent Alzheimer's? Yeah, Cyrex Labs, their real uh, main focus is autoimmunity and immune dysregulation. And they have a test that's really second to none for uh, evaluating gluten. Instead of just checking, checking for one gluten peptide, they evaluate for multiple gluten peptides to really decrease the chance of a false negative because gluten is such a well-known trigger for a variety of inflammatory conditions. We want to make sure that we get it right the first time that we test it. So they have an excellent test for that. It's called Array 3. It's a multi-gluten peptide analysis. And then they have Array 2, which evaluates for that gut barrier problem it lets us know if there's what's called leaky gut, where the gut is no longer bound together the way it's supposed to, and it's compromised in such a way that bad guys are allowed to get 
from the gut into the circulation where they're not supposed to be. Another barrier system that we need to really care about is in the brain. It's called the blood-brain barrier, where the gut barrier separates the gut from circulation. We, want, we don't want things to cross into the brain that aren't supposed to. Sure. So there's a barrier system called the blood-brain barrier. There's also a test for that from Cyrex Labs. Really? So it's a great way to have a really comprehensive evaluation. The key thing to keep in mind here, Olga, is that these laboratory tests are the first of their kind. And when we talk about these tests, should everybody get these screenings? It's a good test uh, for a, a whole variety of conditions, but especially if you have a family history or a personal history of any kind of inflammatory neurological problem, like if you have a family history of Alzheimer's disease, if you have a family history of Parkinson's or even multiple sclerosis, other kinds of autoimmune conditions, but also things like uh, depression and ADHD huh. have been tied to neuroinflammatory problems. Doctor, for anybody that would like more information, where would they go to? Yeah, they can go to joincyrex.com, joincyrex.com. Thanks for all the information. Thank you. And if you want to head to our website, thebalancingact.com, we've got more information there on these groundbreaking medical diagnostic tests. That's thebalancingact.com. And don't forget to join us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm actually on Twitter. I'm on Twitter. So how's your holiday planning coming along? It's the most magical time of the year, but for moms, it can also be a bit stressful. And if your child is one of the six million kids out there with food allergies, well, holidays can be quite challenging, especially the first time around. And just in time, Michelle Casalia from Kids with Food Allergies is back with a few holiday tips. It is great to see you again, Michelle. Well, thank you so much. So thank you for having us. glad to have you in the studio. Now, I know you have a son and a daughter, and you tell me what it was like the first time after your son was diagnosed to go through a holiday season with him? It was really hard. Mm. It was emotional and it was nerve-wracking. You felt the need to always watch him like a hawk. You had to communicate with the family and our friends to let them know about his food allergy diagnosis. It was extremely stressful. So the first order of business is to educate the family and friends before the holiday time comes, right? Absolutely. It's really important to communicate and to let everyone your family, your friends know what they're allergic to. And you also wanna make sure that you follow an emergency care plan. And an emergency care plan, you wanna make sure that you have an epinephrine auto device. And that can be in the form of an AviQ or it can be in the form of an EpiPen. Mm -hmm. There's several devices out there. You wanna make sure that you know the signs of an allergic reaction and you wanna be prepared. You can go to Kids with Food Allergies and learn different prevention and you get prepared. For example, when you're in the kitchen with all your friends and families and you are cooking together, you wanna to make sure that you use separate utensils when you're cooking with the safe food and also with foods that may have the allergens that your child may be allergic to. You wanna make sure you hand wash, you wanna make sure there's no cross contamination. And I know the last time we talked, you talked about the importance of avoiding isolation for that child, which, which can be really hurtful, right? It can be. Some families choose to maybe stay home, mm. and that's okay. And then others tend to say, you know what, we gotta go out, we're gonna be with family and friends, so you prepare. And really, it comes down to preparing and prevention preventing an allergic reaction and communicating to your family and friends and letting them know what your child is allergic to. It can be as simple as calling ahead and telling your aunt to remove the bowl of nuts at the table. Right. Instead of focusing on food traditions, maybe you want to focus on non-food traditions. And I also want to talk about the Kids with Food Allergies website because there's a plethora of information there. It's such a great website. Kids with Food Allergies is an amazing website. Everything on the Kids with Food Allergy website is free. That includes educational handouts. It has free webinars. It has an amazing blog. Kids with Food Allergies has over 40,000 members across the country. Um, we are a nonprofit charity and we are celebrating our 10 year anniversary. And it's wonderful for parents, for family members, for nurses, doctors, school counselors, 
many different resources for all the folks out there, the caretakers of your kids with food allergies. We'd love to hear some of your favorite holiday tips and substitutes. One of the greatest things about kids with food allergies is our free database of recipes. Oh, great. We have over a thousand recipes, and what you can do is you go to our website, and you can plug in what your child is allergic to. And out comes different foods that you could have during the holidays. For example, there's tons of holiday pies that are free of the top eight allergens. We even make an egg-free eggnog. No. Yes. That's amazing. There's an amazing amount of things that you really can substitute that you can bring to your friends and families that are the same, a pumpkin pie, but that everybody could eat, including your child with food allergy. I also want to congratulate you on your 10-year anniversary. Thank you so much. Yes, we're celebrating our 10-year anniversary. That's wonderful. And just thanks again for being on the show. Great information. Thank you for having me. There's no time to waste with your holiday plans, so head straight over to thebalancingact.com for all these great food allergy recipes, tips, and resources. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Food allergies, many of us have them, and while many may have milder food allergy reactions and intolerances, some have more serious reactions. Now with us today demonstrating a breakthrough smartphone app that helps not only control our exposure to allergic foods, but provides valuable real-time information as well is Moa Turander, head of nutrition and brand strategy for Content Checked Incorporated. It's a company offering peace of mind by putting knowledge of food allergies literally in the palm of your hand. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Thank you. So glad you're here today because I find this to be so important to talk about an app that can help save lives. Yes. Because the reality is food allergies, they're out there and so many people are affected with an allergy. About 15 million Americans today suffer from food allergies and they're quite serious because they can be life-threatening. They can. And not only the 15 million people that are suffering from the food allergy, but think about the families around to turn their whole kitchen around. And their and whole life yeah, as well. I absolutely. have a good friend of mine whose daughter was diagnosed just recently and she's, she's expressed to me, practically in tears, yeah. how this has affected the entire family and especially when she goes to the supermarket. So yep. how does an app like this help her when she's, let's say, grabbing this chocolate and wondering if her daughter's allergic to it? Yes, so for anyone with food allergies, it comes down to the ingredients. So for every product that you look at, you have to go and read this itty bitty text that is on there. And sometimes you don't even understand it. Yeah, there are some weird, very weird ingredients out there. So we have developed this app called Content Checked. It's an app that checks for your allergies as well as intolerances. So it has all the allergies in there? It has quite a few, yes. So it has the major eight ones, but it has a couple of more than those. So Read them out for me. You have celery, you have eggs, fish, gluten, lactose, mm -hmm. lupin, milk, you know, shellfish, sesame, peanuts, of course, nuts, the big one. wheat, of course. So once you've chosen your allergy profile, let's say you have two kids with different allergies and you choose both of their allergens, right? So let's say you're choosing uh, whatever, peanuts, milk, and... Soy, let's, for example. Okay. Mm -hmm. You click save, you hit scan, and this is an automatic scanner. So you just hold it over the barcode like this. And so it very easily recognizes the barcode and shows you the products that you just scanned. So here we have this chocolate, Evening Dream, seems wonderful, but it has peanuts and soy and all the other stuff that you didn't want in there. And it's actually putting it in red for you, telling you, yeah. be careful. Yeah, it warns you. It says, uh-uh, this is a no-no. Don't go there. So you stand there and say, okay. This is not good for me. This is not good for me or my kids, whoever is having it, and you still want dark chocolate, right? So fortunately, we have many wonderful alternatives out there, and this is my favorite. This is Pasha. It's 100% organic, and it's 100% GMO-free, and best of all, it's free from the major eight allergens. So let me understand this. When you scan this chocolate, yep. the app will then give you an alternative that you can search yep. for. So what happens is you get warned for, in this case, nuts and milk. You click alternative, <gasps> and da-da-da-da, Recognize the product? Yes. Yes. And then you know you're safe to get that. Yes. That's wonderful. Does it work with all smartphones? Yes. So you can get it on an iPhone or Android. 
Yeah. This is great. And what about recipes? Um, we do have recipes and they are adapted to your allergies as well. So, and these, these are recipes that people with allergies who have kids with allergies have actually put in there themselves. So are we, you getting good feedback from people who are using this? Yes, it? absolutely. What are they saying? They say, thank you <laughs> for not having me, you know, go in the store reading small labels while my two kids are pulling my pants at the same time. And people are seeing this as a great solution when it comes to reading, reading labels. So it's as easy as just grabbing a product at the market, yep. scanning the barcode, and it giving you the alert yep. of what you need to watch out for. Absolutely, so, so you can scan this product, okay, it wasn't good. Maybe you see another one. You scan that one. Not good. Not good. And you keep on until you, you find can, one. Yeah, or you get the alternatives. So you can actually purchase them directly into the app. What if you find a product, Moa, and it's not in there, in the database? So if that happens, then it gives you an alternative to add the product yourself. Okay. So you add a photo of it, you add some information that is enough for us, the team back at the headquarters. And you do the work. Yeah, we validate the ingredients because we have to make sure it's correct. And how do you, I guess, keep this information valid every single day? I mean, yeah. do you update? Yes, so what is so incredible with the database that is behind this app is that it is manually updated and manually controlled. So we have a team of six experts that sits back in the headquarters and looks through the database and makes sure that the information is updated and that we get all the alerts from the FDA, whatever ingredient changes there are in products, we get them and we make sure that the database is up to date. Fabulous, one final question for yep. our viewers, where can they get information on the app? So we have contentchecked.com, the website. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, so it's content checked over there as well. And that's yeah. checked with an ED, past tense. Yes, past tense. All right, that's we're right. gonna see you again. Thank you so much. Very nice to meet Great you. information, and I love what you guys are doing. This has been, by the way, the first in our series on food allergies. More great information coming up in future shows, including how to have a safe, allergy-free holiday season. So important. In the meantime, check us out at thebalancingact.com for programming updates on this and other topics, or get a little bit social. We love that by logging on to Facebook forward slash the Balancing Act fans. We are so glad you spent part of your morning with us. And there's always lots more information on all of today's topics on our website, thebalancingact.com. And Check we're social. Out. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. No. Find us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. I just really wanted to say we're social. Yeah, we are. Thanks for joining us. We're very social. Remember, find your balance, everybody. So long.